Okay. Start it. Welcome to Books That Matter, People Who Matter. I'm your host, Leroy Baylor, and our objective here on Books That Matter is to get pe people to read. <laughs> and um, that read books, read newspapers, just read across, read everything that you can get on, get your hands on to that is um, that's decent. And before we get into today's program, I want to mention a special event that's coming up Saturday, January 28th, and it's a panel discussion on this book, How to Eat to Live, by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And at the end of the program, you'll see a telephone number, and you should follow up on your own. But this book here, every time you see a Final Call newspaper, there's a page from the book in that paper. And that column in this book can actually save your life. Once again, this is Books That Matter, People Who Matter, and our guest today is Elijah Shabazz. He's an independent researcher, and he's found and uncovered some information relating to the Fulani and black people here in America. Welcome to <laughs> Books That Matter, People Who Matter, Thank Shabazz. You. Thank you for having me back again. <laughs> and um, in this day and time, when you have, um, when, when we all have exposure to a, a movie like hidden figures which is information that's coming out that when we see the film we feel that we should have known this information right, right. years ago but yes. it's coming out now and and this is the time that we're living in yes. your research hidden figures other people's research and the receptivity of our of of the public not just black people to information regarding mm -hmm. who black people really are yes. and what we have to offer mm -hmm. beyond the stereotypes is 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 in the air. Yes, so exactly. we welcome you to come on and uh, share with us information that you've uncovered regarding Fulani yes. and the ties to black people in America yes. and scripture. Exactly, exactly. And uh, you, you hit all three points that uh, God will and I intend to make before the interview is over. Uh, you know, it's, it's one thing you know, uh, to say to our people, uh, you know, you are the people of the book. You are the people of the Bible. You are the people of the Quran. And uh, and when we hear this from our great speakers, such as uh, the Honorable Minister of Farrakhan and uh, coming from the teachers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and uh, that we are these, these people, it's another thing to connect those dots from your personal family lineage mm -hmm. to the people of the book. Now we know that we fulfill the prophecies of the, the, the people that's written of in the Bible and the Quran, particularly as the Israelites. And, uh, but there's a, another aspect to this where we are also those historical people that you read about inside of these books. So uh, you can trace this through several tribes that came from West Africa. Mm -hmm. Uh, whether it's the Wolof people, whether it's the 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 God people, uh, the the Shante people of Ghana, or uh, you know the the Mandinka people, uh, you can make those connections. Uh, being that I found my family roots with the Fulbe people, uh, of course I've done extensive study on who I am, where my roots go to, and as it relates to the the prophetic peoples, uh, which came as a later. Uh, subsequent uh, of my research. Now, I, I did this subject already on Facebook when I recently traveled to Morocco. And um, uh, the, the title of the, the, the Facebook uh, study was um, uh, Examining uh, the Fulani History of Uqba Ibn Nafi. And I did this while I was in Morocco because that's where the event took place. And I did a live uh, Facebook broadcast from Morocco. The feedback I received um, was for the most part positive, but people had some questions. They, some, some people misunderstood. 
And that's why I felt the need to come on your program mm -hmm. to clear up some of these misconceptions. One of the things that people misunderstood was that I, they thought I was saying that Fulbe people originate with Arabs. And that was not the case. In fact, um, the, uh, in this book here called Hebrewisms of West Africa, when uh, certain European explorers and scholars uh, went to North Africa uh, and, and West Africa, when they saw the Fulani people, so many of them reasoned, uh, ed, uh, people like Edmund D. Morrell and uh, Del Faso and uh, Dr. Gur Gur Gurudon, G-U-I-R-A-U-D-O-N. These are French names. I can't pronounce mm -hmm. them well. Mm -hmm. My French is not that strong. And, and many scholars, they have written books. Uh, Louis Toxier and uh, others have written volumes of books on the origins of the Fulani people because they couldn't figure out who were these reddish, brown, copper tone people? Uh, and most of them agreed that these people were the Hebrew people. And, and they say, some say the people of foot. They come to these conclusions because one, the cattle that the Fulani have, when they dug up in ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt, mm -hmm. and they, they dug up the bones of the cattle of the, the, that was uh, the subject of many dynasties, because when you see these reddish copper tone people uh, uh, drawn on the, on the, on the periods of the of mm -hmm. Egypt, uh, you see them, they always have cattle with them, yes. cows with them. Yeah. So they dug these cows up, and these cows are extinct, and there's only one people that still have this cattle, and mm -hmm. that's the Fulani. Mm -hmm. They still have the cattle up until this very day. Um, the Fulani, they noticed that the Fulani uh, women the, the pure Fulani women, they give up their, their firstborn, which is in the Bible about the, uh, the, the, the Hebrew people sacrificing their firstborn uh, child. Uh, so they, they say, wow, this is the same as what is in the, the Bible. In the Quran, uh, the, they talk about the, the arsh, which is the throne. Uh, they say Allah's throne is, uh, is called the arsh. And, um, but this word Ash was also used for the house that Musa built, peace be upon him. And Musa, he built the house and it was made of these particular sticks and it had uh, the straw roof. And it's the exact same type of house that the nomadic Fulani built. Um, the, the features of the Fulani people fit the description of those ancient Egyptians. They did a, uh, when they dug up the skull of mm -hmm. the ancient Egyptians, the, the head shape of the Fulani people is exactly the skull shape of the people they dug up in ancient Egypt. So it's, it's no doubt that the, the Fulbe people uh, are from those ancient people. And they were, they, they've been doing migration patterns in the past from north to south up in North Africa. I mean, from, from, from east to west in, in, in uh, North Africa. Mm -hmm. as opposed to the way they do it now in, in West Africa. So this establishment to the connection to the people of the prophets is, is very, very clear uh, for many, many, many researchers. It's, it's been concluded. It's clear for researchers. Yes, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. before we continue, mm -hmm. I want you to, first of all, Musa is Moses. Moses, yes, excuse okay. me, yes. And, and historic, historical people, People of history and people of the book. Mm -hmm. I think you use those two phrases. Yes. All yes. right. Give give an understanding of what people of the book, people of history and people of the book. Okay. Well, people of the book uh, can be people who are believers in the book, and people of the book are uh, also referred to the actual people whom the books are revealed mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes. people of the book can be those who believe in the contents of the Quran. Yes. Or even the Bible. Yes, yes. Or, or what scripture has been revealed yes, to them. Yes, yes, So they would be referred to as people of the book. Correct. And then where you have people of the history, mm -hmm. that's where pushing, quote, religion mm -hmm. aside, yeah. that's where you have a um, an archaeologist mm -hmm. uh, digging and finding um, yeah. traces of a certain groups of people yes, yes and yes. in this particular case they are 
stumbling on or have come upon mm -hmm. a line mm -hmm. from the Fulani people of now to the ancient people yes. of Egypt. Yes, that is correct. And the ancient people who, are, uh, who fit the description uh, that, the, that received the revelation uh, from God to mm -hmm. the prophets. And the, and the people are the prophets. For instance, every single prophet, if you read, read in both Bible and Quran, they were cattle herders. Mm. They were known as shepherd. Abraham was a cattle mm. herder. Noah brought mm. animals onto the boat. Mm. Uh, Musa was a cattle herder. He met his wife when, you know, mm -hmm. he herded cattle for her. So all of them, peace be upon them, they, they herd cattle. Even Prophet Muhammad was, was recorded to say, peace be upon him, said that, uh, have you ever known of a prophet that wasn't a cattle herder? Mm -hmm. Now, it makes sense for God to choose a cattle herder to spread the message because if you reveal the word to a farmer, the farmer got to sit there and watch his crops. He, oh, he's not going nowhere. Okay. But, the, wow. but, the, but the people who herd cattle, they're going to take it and they, they're going to move they gotta wherever go they grasses. go. Yes, wherever they go, they're going to take the message with them. Okay. This is how Lot found the people of Sodom. He was herding his cattle and he pitched his tents outside the city, just like the Fulani do. The Fulani don't pitch their tents in the city. They pitch their tents outside of the city and then they go and sell milk into the city. Mm. So as Lot was herding his cattle near Sodom, mm -hmm. he had his tents outside the city, and this is how he discovered the people. So all of them were cattle herders, and Abraham's seed was said to be numerous. They will be numerous, and they'll be spread throughout the earth. So the Fulani okay. people fit this description because one out of 100% of all the cattle herders on earth, the nomadic people on earth, I should say, out of 100%, 50% off of Lani. Mm -hmm. So that fits the description of Abraham C okay. being numerous and through the transatlantic slave trade, trade Falani people were spread all throughout the planet okay. Earth. All so right. they, they fit the exact description of the people of the book. Got it. So not and, this. And the, the mm, people of history, it, it history. parallels. Yes. It, it's yes. overlapping. Yes. 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 Okay. Of, the, of, the, of the Old Testament mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So Coming now to this Uqba ibn Nafi, we, which is, which is uh, an individual or a he's tribe? He's an individual. Okay. He is from the Quraysh, which is mentioned the, the, in the Quran. In the Quran, yes, the, the tribe of the Quraysh. So it's already well established that the Fulani are from, it's already been concluded by many, 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 many top researchers, not just Elijah Shabazz, but many top researchers that the Fulani are the people of the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, and the Torah. Um, and uh, so now you come to Islam, because today the Fulani people are 99% Muslim. And they were the ones responsible for spreading Islam all throughout West Africa, Central Africa, and all of these places. Mm -hmm. There's this myth among the, the, the so-called Afrocentric scholars here that uh, it was the Arabs that came and forced Islam on black people, and it's not true. Islam was spread through particularly West Africa among our ancestors from the Fulbe, the Fulani. So you might have heard about this particular general uh, in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teachings or uh, Minister Farrakhan when he talks about a particular general who read, rode his horse to the, the banks of the Atlantic Ocean and he said, if it was not for this ocean, I would mm. have spread mm. um, all the way to the other side and all mm. throughout the earth and that the ocean stopped them. That general that, that was spoken about in the theology of time by the Ambil Elijah Muhammad mm -hmm. is named, his name is Uqba ibn Nafi. Mm -hmm. Now, the Fulani say that Uqba ibn Nafi is the father of their, their particular tribe. Um, and that Uqba ibn Nafi met a woman called uh, Bajo Mango, uh, and he had four sons with the, and those four sons were the, the mm -hmm. souls, the Jalos, you say the Diallo, like mm -hmm. Amadou Diallo, mm -hmm. the souls, there, but it's pronounced Jalo, mm -hmm. uh, the Barrys, and the Ba. And uh, so this is a, a, a story that is, is, is told in two Fulani people throughout West and Central Africa. Some believe that it's just a story that, um, uh, you know, that their parents told them that to make them strong in the faith of Islam and that it's not really true. But so what I did, I wanted to examine that, mm -hmm. you know, being that uh, I have established my roots with the Fulani people. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see if there was any relation to that story in actual 
uh, uh, you know, history and genetic mm -hmm, facts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the first thing I... Once I, again, uh -huh. you have, quote, mm -hmm. actual fact yes. and mythology. Right, right. And right, you're right. dispelling, well, actually, you're not dispelling the mythology mm -hmm. at that time, but you're approaching it yes. to see whether it's true or just some Something, fable. Yes, exactly. So what we do know from history that at the time of the, the Umayyads coming into North Africa and Upa ibn Nafi being a uh, uh, descendant of the Quraysh and he had about 14 companions of the Quraysh uh, of the, the, with him in his inner circle and there were many that came with them as, in, as soldiers. Mm -hmm. And they, they came to North Africa and they came to an area where the prototypical Fulani were. Okay, they came to North Africa coming from where? Coming from uh, across Syria, across Egypt. Okay, coming from, from that part of the world yes. that we look at as being, quote, Arab. Yes, that, yes, yes. That part of the world, and when we go back in time, those are darker people they're, as they're opposed to the, the mixture that, that occurred that Chancellor Williams refers yes. to in the destruction of yes, the black exactly, civilization. Exactly. Okay. These, these were these were the dark skinned Arabs that, that were noted and recorded of in history. So they come into North Africa. They come they come to North Africa. And uh uh, uh Uqba, when he gets to uh southern Morocco in particular uh, they said he didn't, you know, because they were after conquest. They, they were really not after um, uh, establishing the religion, per se. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were after more so kingdom, you know, and they were after uh, taxable populations. So the, the old Roman Empire was in North Africa already. Constantinople was already in North Africa already. Um, you, 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 had, you had these well-established uh, governments that existed there. So when they wanted to conquer, they wanted to conquer people who actually were disbelievers because you can't tax a believer. You can't tax a Muslim. Mm. So they wanted to conquer people <laughs> who weren't Muslim. <laughs> so this whole thing about they wanted to so force they, Islam so on people, kept, no, no. They kept going and going and going. <laughs> yes, okay, yes. Go so, okay. so they went after these Berber populations and, and, uh, and they, they just basically conquered their kingdoms and imposed the tax on them. It was later that they, they woke up and say, well, you know, we should join on to the Islam so we don't have to pay the tax. Oh, okay. And that's how the Islam began to spread. Okay. You see? Um, but when he got to this particular area of southern Morocco, uh, I, I just want to read, it, it, it talks about how Uqba's expedition to the West remains one of the most important uh, of, of the Muslim Maghreb. And it says there was, uh, however, a more sinister side to his exploits. He is said to have acquired human booty in the form of young Berber girls, the likes of which no one in the world had ever seen. Now, this area where he went was where the prototypical Fulani were at the time of the conquest of uh, the, the Umayyads and the uh, Abbasids. And uh, they were in southern Morocco. So the connection of him going after the women there mm -hmm. is, is clear through historical research. So uh, it, it, it supports the, 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 the theory that, yes, Uqba ibn Nafi had children with Fulani women. And that one of these women he actually brought back and became the mother of the Abbasid Caliph, uh, Ahmed al-Mansur. Uh, uh, al uh, not, I believe I don't know. I believe it's Ahmed Al Mansour. I know mm -hmm. it's Al Mansour. Mm -hmm. So he he is actually the son of a Fulani mother. He's the founder of the city of Baghdad. Okay. And he's and his mother comes from southern Morocco. Uh, according to my research, I believe he's a, of course a son of a Fulani mother. And um, the DNA of the Fulani. Now there were three studies that were that were done, and one was uh, by. Uh, uh, King King Fahd of Saudi Arabia because he wanted to know the DNA of the Arabian people. And when he, when he did the study, he noticed that, uh, that of course, the, 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 the people of the Hejaz of, of Arabia were related to the Africans on the East Coast, the Ethiopians, the mm -hmm. Somalis, mm -hmm. and, and those people, mm -hmm. which is a no-brainer. They're mm -hmm. right across the water for mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. But there was one particular group 
all the way on the west coast of Africa. So if you look at a map, there's a group of people all the way on the west coast of Africa that shared the same DNA with the people of Saudi Arabia. And it was the only group that shared the same DNA on the west coast of Africa. And those people were Guineans. They didn't say which group of Guineans, they just said Guineans. Mm -hmm. That was according mm -hmm. to the, to mm -hmm. the uh, research conducted by King Fahd and the people he commissioned. Mm -hmm. Then there was another research connected, uh, conducted by uh, DNA study, I should say, not research, DNA study. These were DNA studies that were done mm -hmm. uh, by the University of Madeira in Portugal, Spain, and uh, the Tutu University of Estonia. And they conducted, uh, did a DNA uh, search, and they also found among the Guineans, but particularly not just any Guineans, the Fulani, not spread throughout the Guineas. The Fulani tribe actually were the ones who had the same DNA as the people of the Hejaz, the people of Arabia. And there was a, a, another research done by another group that confirmed the same thing. So these are three different DNA studies mm -hmm. that, yes, connect the Fulani people to the people of the Hejaz or the people of Saudi Arabia, which would put them in the, the family of not only the Old Testament prophets, but even the new prophet, uh, Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, has blood ties to the Fulani people. Now, there, there are folks, we're going to deal with black folks first. Mm -hmm. um, black folks looking at this, they say, well, what, how does that relate to me? Well, it, 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 it does, because most of our people are religious. We're, we're either mm -hmm. Muslim, mm -hmm. we're either Christian, mm -hmm. you know, and... and for, for me, we are people of the book. We are whether people of the, the book. Quran, whether or the, it's the Bible. Bible. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, you know, and, and, and some of our people, they, they want to, you know, imitate Arabs or imitate mm -hmm. uh, Pakistani. Mm -hmm. And because they believe they're closer to the people of the prophets than themselves. What the match from say? Accept your, yeah, accept your own and be, be yourself. yourself. You are related to the people you of are, the prophets. You are the you people. You are the people. Yes. <laughs> You are those people. You are the people that you're reading about in the Bible, Quran. Wow. So this is very important for the for the African American Muslim, and for the for the African American Christian. Now, in this book, the the Hebrew Hebrewisms. Yes, of West Africa. Yes. Okay. What's the value of that book to so, to the audience? Th well, the value of this book is that this particular uh, 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 author, Joseph J. Williams, he co compiled. The, the, the studies of, of many researchers that went into mm, West Africa mm -hmm. and did genealogical studies mm -hmm. uh, on the people and how they connect to mm -hmm. the, the, the Hebrew people or the, the Israelites or, or however we, we want to say it. So, um, so yes, this is, this, is, this, is, this is very valuable. And um, uh, again, it's, it's, it's important for us because we're, we're spiritual people. We're spiritual people. We're, we're, we're loyal, you know, to the church and to the mosque. And we, we need to know that, you know, stop looking to a white Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, stop looking to, to white pictures of prophets. Mm -hmm. You know, this is psychologically putting us, uh, making us mentally enslaved to our physical enslavers. Mental bondage. Mental bondage, yes. Because we're still thinking that all the people that are noble and righteous are Caucasian. Outside of us. Outside of us, yes. Yes. Instead of looking in that mirror and say, man, I am I am from the seed of Ibrahim. Which Peace is not the same thing, but going yes. back to hidden figures, showing the dynamic uh, mental capacity of black mm. women. Yes. And not just one, three of them, but a whole group of them, mm. and and these women existing without the knowledge they they had knowledge among themselves that mm. they were existing and that they were dynamite uh, mathematicians, but to the outside world we didn't know until okay. today. Okay. So, getting knowledge itself is a broad yes. brush stroke, yes. and it's yes. happening right now. Yes. And what you're sharing, it leaves uh, no reason. In other words. People who hear this, who see this, are obligated to do some research on their yes, own. Yes, yes. To do their own personal research, to make that, to connect them dots from New York City, as, as I have done, uh, you know, from here, New York, going back to my people in South Carolina, and from South Carolina to West Africa, then from West Africa 
to to ancient uh, to to North Africa, from North Africa to to ancient Kemet, to you know uh, going all the way back. You see, but you have to start from where you are and make your way backwards. Some of our people they just jump on a plane and go straight to <laughs> Ethiopia. <laughs> They, 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 and it's they real. Just, yeah, yeah. They're going to do something. <laughs> exactly. It's like, you, you know, it's like, they, it's like, and, and when they get there, the people tell them, no, you're not from here. You, you know, because they weren't taken directly from Ethiopia right, and brought right, over here. Right, you were taken from right. West Africa. Right. You see, you, you might have been taken from uh, Angola. So when you went to Africa, you went to a particular country and you saw yourself. Did I see myself? Mm -hmm. Now, this, uh, I, I uh, not only did I see myself, um, what we're you, talking about a look-alike, meaning, they, you see, know, your daddy was over in Africa. He yes, never yes, went there. Yes, yes, yes. And you're looking yes, at, yes, saying, wait yes, a minute, yes. Now, I had a, had, a, had a very deep uh, spiritual experience, and I, I just I just told this story on uh, uh, a brother's show. Uh, and, um, you know, when I when I went to Guinea, first of all, when I, when I arrived there, I, I, I knew I was home. I mean, it, it, you know, you, you, you it, it felt like. I was born there mm. and that I, I was taken mm. from there as a child. That's what it felt like. It didn't feel like I was visiting a foreign country. Now, I've been to France. I've been to Morocco. I've been to other places. But when I got to Guinea, I felt like, wow, I've, I've, I've always been here. I've already been here. And the people there, when they told them this is an African-American, they said, no, 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 no. This guy, <laughs> this guy is yeah. Pulo Futa. <laughs> He, he's not, no, he, he's Pulo Futa. You're not fooling me. They thought they were trying to run a trick on him. All right, listen, I, uh -huh. we, we are at the end yes, of yes. this yes, yes. interview. Mm -hmm. How can people either follow up with you or get a start on doing re the kind of research that you've done? Okay, uh, to, 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 to get with me, uh, I'm at youtube.com forward slash Elijah Shabazz, youtube.com forward slash Elijah Shabazz or Facebook.com forward slash Elijah Shabazz Productions. That's Facebook.com forward slash Elijah Shabazz Productions. Uh, I will advise everybody to, to first go through their census reports, you know, find out who their families are mm -hmm. in the South. And mm -hmm. then uh, I would recommend to, to do the DNA of their oldest elder because when I came across this research, we hadn't done the DNA yet it wasn't until and this is why it's a blessing that we didn't connect last week because i discovered i read my grand uncle's dna just this past week and it showed and it confirmed Confirm. what my research <laughs> already said that the dna was strong at all the fulani areas futa jala futa toro masina uh Takrur, southern martenia all the places Elijah Shabazz, yes. want to thank you very much for thank joining you. us on <laughs> Books That Matter, People Who Matter. Remember, folks, at the end of this program, you'll see information regarding How to Eat to Live, an event taking place in Harlem, Saturday, January 28th. Thank you, and God bless you, and read books. On to the second. <laughs>